Robotics Autonomous Systems and Artificial Intelligence, or RAS AI, will deliver game-changing capabilities for defence. RAS AI are lawful when they are capable of performing their function, in compliance with the operator's legal obligations. Law is one of the five facets for ethical AI identified by defence. This video is part of a series on these facets, which are responsibility, governance, trust, law and traceability. In this video, we will review the facet of law from the perspective of defence personnel, using a fictional scenario called Striking Blind to illustrate the importance of our legal frameworks for reviewing and evaluating new means and methods of warfare. In Australian defence, we review the legality of all new means and methods of warfare through what is known as an Article 36 review. Legal reviews are informed by Australia's commitment to international humanitarian law which requires measures that reduce adverse humanitarian effects resulting from warfare. Lawrence Sanders is a legal practitioner with over 20 years of military experience with expertise in international human law, including advising on the accreditation and use of new and novel weapons technology. My name is Lauren Sanders and I am a Doctor of International Criminal Law. I've spent 20 years in the military um, as both a signals officer and a legal officer and my area of expertise is largely operational law and the application of international humanitarian law to ADF operations. I'm also the managing director of a small legal firm called International Weapons Review or IWR and uh, we focus on providing industry advice as to how they can operationalise their capability focusing on legal compliance. A great example from recent operations would be the use of ISR to augment the targeting capability or the visual range of an Apache helicopter in uh, operations in Iraq in 2017. Then MUMT, but now HUMT, so uh, human machine teaming, which was using the capability of the, uh, of the Reaper to effectively act as a forward location to uh, visualise what the pilots were looking to target. Interestingly, because that system was one that was being used or uh, tested in operations, the level of trust by command wasn't there yet. What was actually happening instead is that those systems were being used to assist in target verification only after the targets had been verified through the traditional deliberate targeting process. So. Hopefully a mature version of that system will be using that uh, HUM-T process to actually speed up and extend the range of those capabilities without having to come back to a command decision um, headquarters to actually go through that deliberate targeting process, but use it more as a dynamic targeting system. The legal and ethical issues that were foremost in my experience during the introduction of these uh, UAS was two specific areas. The first was whether or not the capability complied with our legal obligations to actually use in the first place. And part of the process of introduction to service of new capabilities, particularly where they're going to have some sort of kinetic effect or connection to a kinetic effect, requires that those capabilities undertake uh, what we call an Article 36 review, which is an article of additional protocol one to the Geneva Conventions, which requires that methods, means, or or weapon systems um, are actually checked to comply with our international law obligations. So prior to the introduction of the UAS, they were checked to see if all of the systems capabilities and additional bits and pieces that were associated with them actually complied with our international law requirements. So thinking about some of the additional componentry of a UAS that we wouldn't necessarily have thought about before using it. So that was a process that needed to be tested, assured, and then systems adjusted to make sure that that wasn't a problem and therefore we could use them in compliance with our legal requirements. The second issue that came up when we were talking about the use of UAS in its introduction was really that command trust perspective and whether or not a commander who was making a decision to rely on an information feed coming from a UAS would satisfy their requirements and from a legal perspective satisfy their legal standards to make a decision about targeting. Commanders have obligations as decision makers in that targeting cycle. They're ultimately the individuals who are responsible for the decision to release a weapon system. So when they were working through the process of integrating those ISR feeds from various different locations into the targeting cycle, there was a period of adjustment to understand whether or not they could rely on those feeds and what the standard of reliance on that information was. Ideally, legal reviews should occur early in RAS AI design and development to provide an opportunity to secure more humanitarian and ethical outcomes. 
Damien Copeland is a senior research fellow in the University of Queensland Law and Future of War group. Damien's research focuses on the application of export control, arms trade and sanctions regimes relevant to the export and brokering of trusted autonomous military systems and associated technology. He has over 30 years of military service. Defence is obliged to comply with Australia's legal obligations and they're represented uh, in the body of law known as international humanitarian law or the laws of armed conflict, LOAC. And so uh, that places obligations on uh, individuals, uh, whether they be the commanders or the operators uh, of artificial intelligence in armed conflict and makes them responsible for uh, the lawful use of artificial intelligence. There are policy frameworks uh, that are relevant within Defence. Defence recently published their Doctrine on, uh, on Ethics, uh, which is an important uh, framework uh, that applies. And of course Defence has policy uh, that gives effect to the legal obligation to conduct what's known as an Article 36 review of new weapons means and methods of warfare. Th that obligation essentially requires defence to ensure before they employ any new weapon, uh, means or method of warfare, that it is lawful uh, in, uh, in relation to Australia's uh, legal obligations. The development and introduction of RAS AI in defence is at an increasingly uh, rapid pace. And uh, there is a need uh, uh, for Defence to consider whether uh, there is sufficient policy framework to properly enable and regulate and, and govern the development of use of RAS AI. The Australian Government has a, uh, a national policy on, on ethical AI. There are other uh, um, relevant uh, guidelines uh, that exist both at the federal and state level. But the question is whether uh, defence needs a policy that specifically addresses uh, the legal, uh, the ethical and the safety issues that are related to the employment of AI in, in a military setting. Full testing and evaluation at the early stages of RAS AI development and throughout the system's life cycle is a vital part of the legal review. The 2021 Perry Group paper, Striking Blind, provides an example of the necessity of legal review by depicting a fictional scenario, which describes the risks of rushing technology into use. Sean Hamilton, um, I'm a pilot uh, with experience on Super Hornets, Classic Hornets, and a little bit of time flying remote piloted aircraft. Our story was Striking Blind, and our sponsors from Army Headquarters wanted us to explore the impact of trust in autonomous systems. The Striking Blind uh, story is about the ADF putting a artificial intelligence system called Mandela into service. Mandela, think of a room size artificial intelligence uh, system. Theoretically, it's a decision AI, so it helps commanders make targeting decisions. In our story, it was developed by the United States to fight a high-end war against China because the high-end conflict uh, decisions were so rapid and complicated that humans weren't able to make them appropriately, so they fielded an AI. Australia bought that AI uh, under pressure from the United States, uh, with the US highly recommending that Australia purchase the AI and put it into service to facilitate integration and interoperability uh, in coalitions. In addition to that, Australia was doing modelling, uh, looking at their likelihood of success in a war against China, um, and realised that they would be at a significant uh, disadvantage if they didn't uh, purchase the AI. So there was a lot of pressure uh, to go ahead and field it. Fast forward, our story is not set in a high-end war, it's set in a low-tech uh, separatist uh, conflict in the Philippines, where we're assisting the Filipino uh, government uh, re-establish control uh, over areas of territory. Mandela AI is there with the ground force commander and it's helping identify targets using all source uh, intelligence so that we can engage threats to friendly forces uh, more effectively. The story starts with a crew of a Super Hornet airborne over the Philippines. They are escorting a Filipino special forces patrol uh, that's down on the ground. They are accompanied with some loyal wingman uh, drones made by Boeing. They're orbiting overhead the special forces patrol and they start identifying targets via the drone. They're unsure whether they're hostile initially, but they are closing with the friendly patrol. They are deemed hostile then by uh, Mandela. From the Super Hornet crew's perspective, 
they're looking at a display of a bunch of tracks that are yellow with a, a whole lot of contributors, and as Mandela identifies them as hostile, they're flipping red on their scope. Now, the Mandela AI could be set to just automatically engage those targets or direct the engagement of those targets, but in this particular conflict, to mitigate the risk of having an autonomous system employing firepower without a human in the loop, the Mandela AI is just recommending um, targeting suggestions to the commander, and then the commander on the ground as the target engagement authority is ordering the strike. So he goes ahead and orders the strike. Um, 32 uh, enemy fighters are destroyed uh, on the ground, and the special forces patrol is protected. That engagement's a success. The fighters are then re-rolled to a second engagement, a bridge seven kilometers to the south, where our sensors have picked up seven technicals on a bridge, which Mandela then deems hostile because they're an imminent threat to the special forces patrol. The AI thinks that they're about to step off and commence an engagement. The commander gets that decision. They attempt to get eyes on those vehicles, but due to low cloud, they can't. So ultimately, commander weighs the risks and accepts the Mandela engagement recommendation uh, based on it being an imminent threat to the friendlies. Weapons are dropped through the cloud, uh, and at the time, successfully destroy the technicals. The story fast forwards four years. It has now come out that that engagement was a failure and it was one technical on a bridge that was a checkpoint stopping civilians fleeing a village and the strike killed uh, 92 people and it injured uh, another 100 or so. In part, the catastrophic error that occurs in striking blind is the result of an inability to access the full bounds of the learning algorithm that informs the Mandela AI system. My name is Beck Marlow. I just finished Staff College and as part of that I did the Peri Group option. Understanding what the technology is inside, so what the programming has been, that was one of the key things we were drawing out from our story was that we didn't understand what the programming was and what the learning algorithm was for this, this black box system and that because we didn't own the IP and because of ITAR issues that we were unable to fully understand and appreciate and because we had not conducted the full test and evaluation process and had been unable to test edge cases and edge case scenarios that would potentially affect the employment of the system, we were unable to identify what the issues were potentially because we just hadn't gone through the full process. An edge case is a problem or situation that happens at extreme operating parameters. It can be expected or unexpected. In the case of striking blind, the edge case affected the accuracy and trustworthiness of the RAS AI. The system was being spoofed by, by the enemy, so they were sending false signals and they had cut off all other network feeds to us as well. The biases of the original US um, programmers that they would always have that access to the network. So their, their assumptions and biases had affected the learning algorithm for them, the, the system, and therefore wasn't prepared for that to occur. The Striking Blind paper recommends that Defence take a whole-of-system approach to certification and validation. How does the legal frameworks interact with the introduction of Mandela AI into the scenario? We didn't is specifically address that point as part of the Senate inquiry, but the way that it would work is that we're expected to undertake an Article 36 review, which essentially just means, it just says that you're to review new weapons that are coming into service and essentially making sure that they still adhere to the laws of armed conflict principles of distinction, proportionality, necessity, and humanity. In our story, it's assumed that they are adhering to those uh, principles. The Mandela AI is assessing those laws of armed conflict principles in its uh, decision making. And in this particular engagement, it made a mistake. What sort of new policy do we need uh, in the ADF to govern new employment of AI? We'd say that we just need a policy framework to figure out who exactly is accountable when that AI goes into service. We need to discuss what the, what the bounds are for when uh, commanders are expected to trust the AI and when they're expected to question the AI, and that'll take a lot of work. International Humanitarian Law, or IHL, imposes legal obligations relevant to Australia's design and use of RAS AI. IHL specifically regulates the use of weapons, means and methods of warfare, including those enhanced by AI. The obligation to ensure Australia's use of new weapons, means and methods of warfare is consistent with Australia's legal obligations is created by Article 36 of Additional Protocol 1. Article 36 requires a determination of legality during the study, development, acquisition or adoption of new weapons, means and methods of warfare. In Australia, Article 36 reviews are completed by legal officers within Defence Legal's Directorate of Operations and International Law. 
Ideally, Article 36 reviews consider new weapon technology in early design and development stages, which provides a chance to review, improve compliance and secure more humanitarian outcomes. How would Australia conduct an Article 36 review would be informed by whether or not Australia uh, regarded Mandela as being subject to an Article 36 review requirement. So the first question that Australia would consider is whether Mandela as an AI decision tool is in fact within the definition of a new weapon, means or method of warfare as Australia understands and, and this is a, a, a policy decision that Australia would make. Now in this case uh, the uh, Mandela's may not be regarded as a weapon per se, but it, it may be regarded as a, a means of warfare, for example, that would potentially bring it into the Article 36 review obligation. And that's a, a matter for Australia to determine as a, as a matter of policy. The Perry Group striking blind paper shows that robust oversight of the RAS AI will benefit Australian defence. We still had the, the human in the loop, so it wasn't a fully autonomous system. It was a semi-autonomous system being employed. So under Article 36, that that is one of the, for a, for a targeting system, that is actually a caveat of Article 36, is that you still have a human in the loop, that the, the robotic system cannot make the decision itself to target things. There has to be someone else in the end making that, that call. If Australia was to conduct uh, an Article 36 review of the Mandela, I'd imagine they need a lot more information that than the scenario suggests was made available. There are a range of issues that are relevant. So Mandela's functionality clearly entails decisions that are governed by the laws of armed conflict. So questions around how were those laws of armed conflict actually programmed into the artificial intelligence? What was the interpretation of the US programmers and how well did they understand the applications of the laws of armed conflict. These are only just uh, the start of the information. The legal reviewer would also be concerned with the data that was used both to train and to, and to validate the system. The legal reviewer would be interested in whether there were biases that are present within the, the training data, whether the training data itself was suitable for the environments in which Australia intends to use the system. It would have to demonstrate that it, it is capable of use uh, in accordance with Australia's legal obligations. And that would mean that Australia would need to understand uh, the uh, legal rules that apply to its functionality and then whether or not its uh, consideration and application of those rules meets the standards that Australia requires. That would require independent testing by Australia of the Mandela system to, to make sure that the, that the uh, testing data and information that they rely upon to make an assessment uh, is sufficient. So the, the scenario talks about the system being developed by the US, but the important fact uh, from a, an Article 36 legal review perspective is that the review applies uh, the reviewing country's legal obligations. The US doesn't have the, the identical legal obligations and interpretations of the law as Australia does. And so on that basis, the uh, Mandela system would have to be subject to a, a full review uh, by uh, the, the Australian Defence Force. As demonstrated in the striking blind story, we need to devote considerable efforts when it comes to conducting full review of RAS AI. To fully understand the design of RAS AI and its alignment with Australia's legal and ethical obligations, Defence should work closely with partner governments and industry to oversee the early creation and development of new systems. This close relationship should continue throughout deployment and use of the system. Not having a clear understanding on how exactly Mandela is making decisions, that is a technical and legal problem with how are we going to buy artificial intelligence systems from the United States and have a clear understanding of how exactly they're developed, how they're taught, how they're learning on the fly, and how can we um, analyze their decisions and pick up any sort of errors that happen in the course of operations. So that's going to 
require very close work uh, with in industry. We need to be inside the tent uh, when they're developing uh, these systems, and we need to have really clear arrangements for the flow of information. We need to make sure that when we purchase the artificial intelligence system, it's not just buying at the shop and taking it home. It's a full life cycle approach where the industry that made the system is fully embedded in the operation of the system, and they're helping uh, the ADF continue to monitor its functionality, conduct continuous tests, and making sure that it's still behaving in the way that we expect it to behave so that we've got full disclosure on how exactly it's making decisions. The better ethical and lawful decisions that could be made through AI need to be brought into the fore early in the piece within the learning cycle of the AI system itself. Just like a person, if you give the AI good information and good data, you can then test that person, or in this case the AI, to see what decisions it makes and then validate the decisions were correct or incorrect. And from there, understand how your morals and ethics align with those decisions or how they may not. And more importantly, how do you change the way the AI thinks or learns to then be more appropriate decisions at the other end or recommendations to commanders for decisions. Within AI being introduced into Australia, into the, the near future, there has to be a clear line of legal requirements for commanders and end users and an impetus placed on the people developing the um, training and technology to make sure that they're aware of their legal liability for the future on decisions based on the recommendations of AI. It allows people to be invested in the insurance that the AI is going to provide recommendations that are appropriate for our organisation in a conflict in the future. So when it comes to the development of RAS AI, what are the limitations on programming legal obligations into a machine and where will humans still be responsible? The AI or the machine should be able to operate consistent with Australia's legal obligations and obligations around uh, distinction, precautions in attack, um, proportionality, not causing unnecessary uh, suffering or superfluous injury. All of these are relevant uh, to the legal review, but it's not that the responsibility for these uh, for the compliance is is delegated to the machine because that's not the case. It's the operator, it's the human who remains responsible for the use of uh, the artificial intelligence, and so that the, the, the uh, review is concerned with whether or not it can be used in accordance with the legal uh, obligations. To delegate the responsibility would, would potentially uh, risk gaps in accountability and responsibility in the use of the system. So the uh, laws of armed conflict are clearly written for humans to comply with. And so some r rules are bound to be more difficult for an artificial intelligence than it is for a human. And that's because some of the rules require distinctly human judgment. So, for example, the rule of distinction in relation to uh, civilian objects requires that where there is doubt as to the categorisation of an object as a civilian object, that doubt requires the presumption that it is in fact a, a protected civilian object. So programming doubt into an artificial intelligence may be a very difficult thing to do. Alternatively, uh, distinction, which requires distinguishing between lawful and unlawful uh, targets, may in some circumstances be uh, eminently programmable into an artificial intelligence, but those circumstances might be quite limited. And that's where uh, the artificial intelligence can use very clear, uh, very discreet uh, um, data to determine whether something is uh, a military objective or a civilian object. And so, for example, if something emits a particular uh, signal or has a unique uh, characteristic that the artificial intelligence can identify, then th those type of uh, scenarios may be more uh, achievable than others. Understanding and meeting the legal requirements for RAS AI are crucial when it comes to ensuring that a system complies with international humanitarian law and passes Article 36 Weapons Review.
Defence and defence industry will have to work closely to create appropriate assurance frameworks for RAS AI and ensure compliance with ADF's requirements so that systems are lawful and ethical. Defence is responsible for the lawful and ethical use of RAS AI. This responsibility includes ensuring appropriate consideration of legal requirements and ethical risks arising from the design, development and use of RAS AI's capabilities now and in the future.